Every non-zero prime ideal in a PID is maximal. Let's go ahead and prove this. So proof. Recall a PID stands for principal ideal, ideal domain. A principal ideal domain is simply an integral domain where every ideal is principal. So suppose that R is a PID and I is a non-zero prime ideal. And the claim here is that I is maximal. So claim I is maximal. So we're going to let J be an ideal such that I is contained in J, which is contained in R. And the goal is to show that J is equal to I or J is equal to R. That's precisely what it means for I to be maximal. So now we're going to use the fact that R is a PID. So since R is a PID, we can write I equal to A and J equal to B for some a, B, and R. In other words, I is the ideal generated by A, and J is the ideal generated by B. So note that A is equal to 1 times A, which is in A, which is equal to I, which is contained in J, which is equal to the ideal generated by little b. In other words, little a is in the ideal generated by b. So there exists some r in capital R such that little a is equal to rb. And just to slow down here for a minute, in, in case you've never seen um, principal ideals before, the, the ideal generated by a is equal to the set of all elements of the form RA such that R is in capital R. Likewise for the ideal generated by, by B. So that's what, it, that's what a principal uh, ideal is. So note, well, I guess I'll stick with this color, <laughs> note, uh, A, which is equal to RB, it's an I, which is the ideal generated by A. And this ideal is prime. Hence, what does that mean? That means that R is in the ideal generated by A, which I'll go back to now. I'll go back to calling it I, right? This is I. So R is an I, or B is an I. Okay, one of the two is going to happen. Okay. So let's take cases. If R is an I, then we can write R as equal to, say, SA for some little s in capital R. And now we should be able to rewrite A in a clever way. So then A, well, that's equal to RB, which is equal to SA, B, because R is SA. And everything here is commutative, right? We're in a domain. So this is a s b. The multiplication is associative, so we can write this as a s b. Hence, a minus a s b is equal to 0, right? Equal to 0. Using the distributive property, we're simply factoring out the a. We end up with a parentheses 1 minus s b is equal to 0. Since R is a domain, we have A equal to 0 or 1 minus SB equal to 0.
But a is not zero because if it were, then I would be the zero ideal. We said it was a non-zero um, ideal. So a is not equal to zero. Hence, 1 minus sb is equal to 0. So 1 is equal to sb. So what does that mean? Well, that means that b is a unit. So thus, b is a unit. Right? b is a unit. And so if b is a unit, we can do the following. So then, 1 can be written as b inverse because it exists, because b is a unit, times b. This is an element of r, and this is b, so it's in the ideal generated by b, which is equal to j. So j contains um, 1, hence for all r and r, r can be written as r times 1. This is an element in R. This is an element in J. Therefore, because J is an ideal, this is also in J. And so R is a subset of J, but J is a subset of R, hence J is equal to R. And I'm showing a lot of detail here on, on purpose. A lot of this is, is pretty trivial, perhaps, but uh, hopefully it's helping. So we've taken the first case if R is in I. Let me switch colors. Now let's take the case if B is in I. I believe this case should be shorter. I actually haven't done this in a while. Let's see. So if B is in I, uh, here's what we're going to do. So take, we have to show J is equal to I. So let's show J is a subset of I. So take any X and J. Then we can write X as rb for some r in r okay for some r in r then x is equal to rb now r is in our ring r b is an i because i is an ideal that means x is an i so we took an x and j, and we showed that x was an i. So j is a subset of i, but we showed at the beginning, we assumed that i was a subset of j. Hence, j is equal to i. So in any case, we either have j equal to r or j equal to i. This shows i is maximal. And so that's how you prove that every non-zero prime, prime ideal of a PID is maximal. Um, I hope that video made sense.